Hey everybody, so you just heard a part of the 2011 version of the Thor theme uh, from the Phase 1 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, so the, the theme for the new film for Thor 2 The Dark World, which I'm going to review for you today, is slightly different. There's a new composer that they hired to do the score for this one. Um, but I thought it would be more suitable to do the one that uh, Patrick Doyle did for the first Thor film, since you know that's been out for two years now, more people are probably going to be more familiar with that one. Um, so in Thor 2 The Dark World, you guys, um, according to the film, it's two years after the events of the Avengers. And um, kind of like what happened with Tony Stark in Iron Man 3, you know, Thor's trying to adjust to his life again. You know, he's trying to get used to being a Thunder God and Osgard again. Um, because his noble deeds in the Avengers were so great, um, you know, people look up to him, Sif and um, all the other Asgardians who follow him around uh, really look up to him now. And um, in kind of the opposite of Thor, everybody doesn't trust Loki anymore. You know, after what he did in the Avengers, after what he did to the first in the third, first Thor film, nobody really trusts him anymore. So they keep him locked up in the dungeon. Um, not a lot of people talk to him in his cell. Um, and meanwhile, you know, Thor is getting all the pride and glory. You know, Odin wants to make him the king of Asgard. Um, but while all that is going on. Um, Apparently, Odin's father once had to deal with a, um, a demon of darkness several, several years ago, if not hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. His name was Malekith, and he was the Lord of Darkness. Um, apparently, he was the king of the Dark Elves, and they were one of the first dark creatures to live in our universe. Um, but he locked him away for years, um, and it wasn't until recently where Jane Foster and a bunch of um, you know her, her friends and scientists... Um, they're in London in this film, and they encounter something that awakens Malekith from what seems to be some type of grave or coffin or something that awakened him uh, all these years from him, you know, slumbering in this pot of some kind. Um, so basically, Malekith wanted to make the whole universe dark. He wanted to make his own dark world, since the title, uh, hence the title. Um, so basically, it's th in this movie, Thor's trying to stop Malekith from making the whole universe dark. You know, he's going to ruin Asgard if he succeeds. He's going to ruin Earth. He's going to ruin Mars. He's going to ruin the whole universe. Um, so it's up to Thor and his fellow Asgardians and the help of Jane Foster and the people of Earth to help get rid of Malekith so we don't have to live in a world of darkness like Malekith wants. Um, so Thor to you guys, I really like this film. You know, it's, I will say, and I know a lot of people are going to, are going to hate me for this, but I think this film was not as good as the first, first Thor film. Um, to me, the first Thor film was a little bit more relatable. I like how they brought Thor to earth a little bit more than they did in this one. Um, I liked how Thor had the challenge in the first film of, you know, not having the things that he was so privileged to have in Asgard, like his hammer and his armor, and he had to learn how to be human. He had to learn how to live in the human world. He had to le learn how to, you know, be the very creature that he lives in, be the very creature that, you know, he is. Um, and, you know, so I guess I liked that challenge of the first film, is he had to learn how to be somebody without his thunder god abilities helping him. And in this film, you know, he's always the thunder god. You know, he's not he's never really, you know, he's he's human, but you know, he's he has his hammer and all his other things that almost make him invincible in a way. So, it was kind of hard not it was a little bit harder to get into this movie just because we knew that, you know, it's so hard to take him down with all this powerful armor and equipment that he has available to him. Um, so for the positives and negatives, you guys, uh, I think Loki really made the film more interesting. When I get to my negatives here, you'll see why. Uh, but the film kind of, it was a slow starting film for me, to tell you the truth. And I think once Loki really made center stage in this film, that's really when I really started to get into it. Just because he added so much more twists and so much, like, a unique take on the film. And almost a unique approach on the character that we haven't seen Loki do in a while. We almost got to see Loki as... A good guy in this film when he took tenor, tenor, uh, when he took center stage in the movie, because um, you know for a while you know he's locked up in this dungeon you know he he he's kind of there to rot you know nobody has any use for him but once Malekith comes into the picture is also when Loki comes into the picture as well since Thor needs his help, um, so what they did with with Loki was very interesting a lot of twists and turns, um, and even when the film is over um, all I'm gonna say is let's just say Loki isn't quite gone yet. Um, so Chris Hemsworth and um, 
Anthony Hopkins deliver great performances in this. Um, I really can't see anybody else but Chris Hemsworth playing Thor at this point. Chris Hemsworth really nails the role. Um, Anthony Hopkins, I thought, I almost liked him better in this film than I did in the first Thor film, just because, you know, um, you really get a sense of looking up to this guy. He really trusts Thor at this point, and I really, we almost like the character more now just because he he really understands what's really going on, that Thor is really the son to look up to, and that Loki is kind of the untrustworthy person to look at just because, you know, Loki betrays so many people to get to where he is. Um, I thought there was a lot of clever Marvel film references throughout this. I will say this, there is a clever cameo from a very popular Marvel character in this film at one point. Very, very brief. You'll definitely not expect to see it coming. It's definitely, they play it out in a way that you really never saw it coming. But when the film reference happens and when, uh, there's also a few references to the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy for 2014. So be on the look for that. Stay for the whole film. Uh, you won't be disappointed. All the returning characters get plenty to do in this film. You know, Thor, um, Darcy played by Kat Dennings, uh, Natalie Portman is Jane Foster again. Um, Dr. Selvig, or whatever his name is, whoever Stellan Scar St Skarsgård plays, I can't even say his name right, um, they all get plenty to do in this film. So as far as, you know, for those who thought it, the first film was just very heavy on Thor, there's a lot of things that these characters get to do um, throughout this film. So if your complaint with the first Thor film was that it was basically all about Thor, not about the other characters around him, I think you'll like this film a lot simply because, you know, all these characters that Thor interacts with throughout the film get a lot to do. You know, we get to see Sif in battle. We get to see Natalie Portman help out, you know, Jane Foster, I'm sorry, uh, help out with, with the, you know, Malekith situation. Uh, Darcy gets a much bigger role in this film, and that's either going to annoy people or make people happy simply because, you know, she was more of the comic relief throughout the first film. And though she's still kind of that character here, um, she's definitely more involved of what's going on in this film. So I think people are either going to love it or hate it when it comes to that character. Um, because, you know, some people found her a little annoying in the first film. And even throughout this one, some people might find her a little annoying too. But um, great action scenes in here. Uh, a, definitely a, a great action film. You can definitely tell that Alan Taylor, who replaced Kenneth Brana as director for this movie, wanted to make sure there's plenty of action in this film. And there is. There's a ton of action in this film. Uh, great CGI here. Whenever they use the CGI in this film, it's very promising. It's very good looking. You can definitely tell they spent a lot of time with the CGI in this film. Um, there's a character named the Cursed in this film, and I, I really wish that he had a much bigger role. I almost wish he had Malekith's role in this film, to tell you the truth. Uh, he was kind of this big bodyguard character that, you know, you didn't want to mess with. He could break through almost anything. Very threatening, very scary to look at. Um, there's even a scene in here where he looks at Loki and even he doesn't trust Loki. And that's just to show you how untrustworthy Loki is. But whoever played the curse, great work, uh, or the cursed, I'm sorry. And it's, and it's actually with a K, it's not with a C for this character's name. Um, I really wish they did more with that character because he was really evil, really brooding. Uh, I would not want to mess with this guy if I saw him in real life. Uh, really neat character that they added into the film. And actually one of the, one of the few good new characters that are in this movie also. For the negatives, you guys, overall, I didn't think, like I was saying before, I really thought Thor 1 was a better film. Uh, like I said, I just, I can relate to it more. I, I like how they thought they brought Thor to Earth and that, you know, he had to learn how to be a human. Um, and I don't know, there was something in this film that was just missing, to tell you the truth. And um, I don't know, I just like Thor 1 better. Um, I thought the film had a weak and long setup. Uh, the setup took forever in this film, and it really wasn't until Loki came into the picture, you know, Loki was in the film, you know, the whole time, but once he became a much bigger character, I thought it was when the film started to really get interesting, um, yeah, it was just a very long, weak setup, there was just kind of this battle that happened, and then it didn't really leak into anything else later in the film, so, uh, really long, really weak setup, and I really wish Alan Taylor would have, I can easily say the first 45 minutes, I think, could have been much quicker, much um, much uh, written better. There we go. Um, just not a great setup for this film. And I really wish that um, if they make a Thor 3, I hope they set it up better than Thor 2 did. Um, I thought there was a lot of boring and bland new characters in this. Even Malekith, who's the main villain of the film, felt very boring, very generic. Um, 
there's a character that wants to date Jane Foster while Thor was away this whole time. Very boring character, really kind of worthless to tell you the truth. Even on the scene that involved a joke with that character, he was just kind of, I, I almost felt like he was just there as filler. I mean, there was really no reason for that character to exist in this film. Um, I also didn't like how the film chose myths over heroism. What I mean by that is the film feels very very fantasy like it it doesn't feel very superheroish to tell you the truth um you know we see thor and sif and the the others do some heroic deeds in this film but it just it seems like a fantasy picture it really seems like something you'd see in lord of the rings or chronicles of narnia though that's fine you know thor is a superhero story it's a marvel comic story which means it has to be a superhero story um, and that's one thing I really miss from Thor 1, is I, I miss the sense of a superhero story in the world of Thor. Um, and it's really too bad that they chose myths over heroism in the story, because I would have liked to have seen, you know, Thor be more of a superhero than uh, Thunder God in this film. You know, it's fine. So I guess the safest way to say it is I needed more superhero scenes in this film and less Thunder God scenes, if that makes any sense. Um and like I was saying before, this film really is not as relatable as Thor 1 was. Um, you know, basically this film is about, you know, uh, Thor trying to be a better Thunder God than he was near the beginning of this film. Um, and, you know, us as the audience really can't connect with that because we don't know what it's like to be a Thunder God. We don't know what it's like to be an Asgardian. Um, so it's just kind of hard to relate to these characters this time around. So I really wish that Alan Taylor would have brought something to the table that could make me relate and connect with this movie more. But overall, guys, I give Thor 2 The Dark World an 8.5 out of 10. Really fun film. I think it's a much better Phase 2 Marvel film than Iron Man 3 was. Um, no stupid comedic tw twists and turns like what happened with that movie. Um, you know, all the twists and turns feel good in this movie. You know, they don't feel bad. Uh, but like I said, some really bland new characters. I really wish if they wanted new characters to be in this film that they were written better. Uh, the setup was a bit long and weak for me. Uh, I didn't like, like I was saying before, that they chose myths over heroism. Uh, not as relatable as Thor 1. And for my last comment, it just it's just not as good as the first Thor, Thor film, in my opinion. So Thor 2, The Dark World, make sure you see it. It's a great film. But at the same time, go, don't go into it knowing it's going to be better than the first Thor film.